Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Knit Cat Podcast. My name is Cat, and this is my podcast. Welcome. Um, I discuss knitting, crochet, and a general addiction to theorem, as always. Um, but yeah, welcome. This is episode 17. If you'd like to see more episodes of me, they will be a card above somewhere, as well as um, I think linked below and on my channel, Worst Case, with the playlist of all of my episodes from episode one, the cringiest, to now. Hopefully not the cringiest. Who knows? Haven't filmed it yet. Let's get going. <laughs> so, yes. Um, saw you out last week. I have no excuse. Literally just got busy, forgot filming was the thing. So, we'll film like today. And we have basically two podcasts in one because it was a lot of progress. Um, not so many projects though, so that's a good thing, I guess. I only have four projects going, in, like four whips currently, but a, a lot to talk about because it's FOs. So, let's get talking about FOs. Um, for those of you who don't know, that is finished objects. Finished object number one. My most, my second muscle boy cat. Um, so this is the one I was making for my friend. I mean, I'm still making it. I'm still giving it to them. Um, oh, and I put the camera closer today so I can actually show you guys without standing up. How smart are we? Oh, technical, technical thank you. I know last week, last week's episode, episode 16, there was a lot of wind going into the mic. Uh, sorry about that. My camera was really far back. Um, like directly under my fan, so it like the microphone on my camera picked up all of the fan. Um, but I have to have it on because my lights are very warm and I don't really want to overheat, so compromise. Hopefully, it's better today though. I haven't ever noticed that in the past. I think literally putting it under directly under the fan though was like the push, so yes. But here it is, it is so cool. I had so much fun doing this. Um, I once again did kick near the top. Um, oh, and by the way, this is already blocked as well. Uh, so, if you do not know, the Muscle Boy Cat pattern is a pattern, I think it was released in like 2018 by Yazola Teague. It's a paid for pattern, but essentially it's just a giant tube. You cast on here, you increase, you decrease, and you bind off. And yeah. So I finished this in about, I think like two weeks, pretty much exactly, because I cast this on right after filming episode 15, and episode 16 I showed it to y'all, and I had it done on Sunday, before I should have filmed this episode, so like last week, but timey why me, all of that jazz, so, giant tube, yes. Um, and, yes, yeah, so this is really, really cool. Okay, you can kind of see where I switched all of the yarns here. There's like a tiny line. Um, it's really not noticeable though. And, oh, I never mentioned this before. This is 100% acrylic, which isn't necessarily always preferred for hats, but I think it's going to work out really well because A, it's a tiny bit thicker than my first one I made because that one was 100% wool, so it like blocked out to be really thin, um, which works perfectly for my climate. But this one, um, it's gonna be super warm. Like even just holding it like this, like my hand is warming up. It's it's awesome. Um, plus, it's really really soft, and I think it'll also work out well because you know if it's like really cold or if it's raining or whatever, it's not gonna absorb the water um because it's acrylic so like it doesn't it, it you can wash it it absorbs the water that way but even then it never fully absorbs water at least in my experience so unlike my other one i have it right here i'll just grab it i grabbed it because i want to show it to you what it looks like blocked um let me just say i, I think this is the first time me working with like wool besides socks um but it is so Amazing to see the wonders of blocking on like wool. It is like for someone who's never seen it before. Whoa! Like this was it wasn't scratchy, but like I don't know. It's just like so much more lightweight. 
I just keep wanting to like throw it because it's just so lightweight and like perfectly thin. The stitches, um, like where the knots were, obviously I didn't like go out, so it still kind of looks like I have a fun yarn over design, even though I was just tying yarns together. But everywhere else, like you're actually in the top, it like work, it like stretched out perfectly. Hopefully that shows up; it's not washed out. Huge fan! I cannot wait to wear this. Um, my mom has already requested to steal it from me as everything thing, so. But yeah. Oh, I did with this green one. So on this pink one, it was the first one I made. Um, so I didn't quite understand the pattern. So when it says make one, um, the increases are basically make one right, make one left. I m ended up taking from like the middle of the stitch, so it kind of left a little hole. Um, you can kind of see that here. But I normally just tuck this one on the inside, like this side, and then this is the top of it. Um, with this one, I think I like went to the stitch underneath the one I was knitting, um, and I took it from the side instead of just straight from the bottom. Um, and it worked out a lot better. I'm having a new one cast on, I'll get to that later in whips, which I did something actually a lot different, which I like a lot better, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, you can kind of, like, those basically just, like, not holes, you know? So it's really, really cool. I love it. Yeah, I'm not gonna try it on to show you what they look like, because, um, I just, like, you know, made my hair look nice for this, or as nice as it can be. I don't know, my hair is what it is some days. <laughs> but, yeah, so I don't want to try on a hat at the beginning of the podcast. Um... And I also may not, I was about to say I'm not going to try it on the beginning, I may try it on the end, but honestly I probably won't, because the thing is, I don't quite look too good in hats, but yeah, so I'm holding these up next to each other, you can see they're like literally the exact same size. This one is a little bit bigger, again, just because it's a tiny bit thicker with the yarn, but it worked out perfectly. Um, I think the thickness is literally just thickness. Thickness is just from um, the white yarn because the white yarn I was using, I think it was closer to like a finger export, and then the green to, of course, add it out was like a light fingering fingering. Um, but I'm I'm so happy. Like I had no idea what I was gonna do with the green yarn. Like when I first got it, I'm like, well, it's not really enough to do anything. There's a lot. Like. I don't have that much left, like I can't really do anything else with it. It's going to have to go into like a scrap pile. Um, and it's like a filler, so I'm not going to quite make socks out of it. But, I got a hat. Another hat. Oh, it kind of looks like a watermelon! I just noticed that! Okay, that's amazing. Um, who knew? So, yeah. Um, also, right after I blocked this one, I did fold it, and it's funny because you can kind of see the crease line right there where I folded it. Um, here, yeah, super comfy. Um, let me fold this one. Just give it a quick room. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm loving these so. Next FO. Next FO, we have, sorry, look at my notes. We have two yarn cozies. So, I made, um, I don't really follow a pattern. I kind of just like, you know, make a yarn cozy out of crochet. Um, so I made a second one of these, sorry, a third one of these for 50 gram yarn. Because um, at the time I was knitting, like I started this on my second sock, I had the white and the green in that in the hat. We're using up my two fifty grams. I'm only free, but I still made a third one. Um, it's not the same yarn, though I know it looks identical because it's yellow. Um, oh, I did want to talk about this a little bit. Okay, so the reason I made this out of yellow and those two as well, um, I have so much fingering weight yellow yarn. Like pale yellow. Like this, this color. Um, I don't know what to do with it. And it's kind of annoying because I'm a big garment knitter. 
Um, I love making sweaters, tops, stuff like that. But, like, this color isn't, like, I don't think it's my color. Um, like, I don't have enough to, like, make a blanket or something. And, like, I don't know what to make. So, like, can you help me? Like, do you have any suggestions of what I could do with, like, pale yellow yarn? Um, because also, like, it's not the softest, so, like, I don't want to make, like, a baby blanket in the off chance, like, we need a baby gift. Any, like, anytime soon. Um, like, I guess I could. And then just, like, super condition it. But if you have, like, any other ideas, let me know. Because I have, like, a really big scheme. Like, I could, I have, like, a sweater swarmy of this yarn. I just don't know what to make. Um, because also, like, I don't know if I have anyone, but, like, that is their color. So, you know. Um, so I have this cozy. And then I made, this one isn't much, isn't much of a cozy, but it's kind of just a yarn holder. Because, here, let me give myself some space. Uh, this, okay, A, I know it's a really ugly color. I put two ugly colors together in the hopes that they, like, would just be a thing. So, yeah, sorry for, like, the, the ugly color. I don't really care because it's just a young cozy. But, yeah, so it is really big. But the thing is, since I store my yarn, my yarn and cakes, they end up doing this the moment I start using them because, like, they kind of fall apart. Um, especially at the bottom. <laughs> so, like, you can see here, this is the bottom of it. Like, it's only this one whitening out. But, yeah. So I need like a cake, like a cozy to put them in, but I don't want to keep making customized cakes. So I made something a little bit bigger that can kind of just hold it. Um, so this works on pretty much in all of them. So we have a couple down here, like here, this one. It just fits. It's a pretty average size for mine. Um, and if it's smaller, it can still fit, you know. Um, so. Stuff like that. But yeah. And then my last finished object is my first May sock. So I also finished this on Sunday when I was supposed to film last week. Um, yeah. It, it, it didn't happen. But finished it. I have not woven it ends or like done anything to it. I just finished knitting it. And I think I'm, once I finish my other sock, I'm going to have to go back and redo the leg of it. Because I was listening to Knitting Maddie's um, podcast, like recent one. It was It's the live one that was in two parts. Um, and she was saying how she forgot to do it on her like, like pair of socks she knit. And she's not going to go back and do it. But what she normally does for shorty legs is she, right after the heel, she'll decrease... Um, four stitches all together and and she knits it and that way it kind of hugs in a little bit more like it's always gonna flare because of the extra stretchy bind off but I think I want to go back and do that on this sock I'm gonna like, just go ahead and do that on my second sock because it definitely will help and also because I tried this on my mom because I've been thinking about making my mom and the, I've been thinking about making my mom some socks um, and she wears a size I think she said six and a half foot, um, six and a half shoe. Um, I wore a size seven and a half shoe. So she has smaller feet than me, but I had to try it on. The foot portion actually fit her pretty well. The heel fit her pretty well. The only thing she requested is if I could make, like, I think I'm going to do maybe like two or like two to three, probably just like two short rows back here um, on the second, like the back half of my leg in order to like bring this up because her heel is a lot higher. And then also decrease the four stitches to do that. So, I think I may just go back and do that in this one. Try out the short rows as well. Because um, these are for me. But I would wear them either way. And that way I can get like a feel to see, does this fit for her? So I can just make her socks next time. Um, but yeah, so it's done. It is really cute. I did a short row heel. And it's cool because the very beginning yarn just like striped and like made a little bullseye. So, it's cute. I'm in love. So, first May sock. Here is my second May sock. 
I'm only like 20 rows into the foot. Um, for a while, I mean like three days, I was doing like 30 minutes of knitting in the mornings. And I would do this, um, I kind of like go on and off between doing that, depending on just like, you know, what you're feeling. But like a toe, tiny little toe. Um, excuse me, by the way, these are 60 stitches. Um, I did the foot on the other one, 65 rows. Um, short or heel, 10 rows for the leg, 10 rows for the cuff. Um, I think when I go back, I'm going to do 12 rows for the leg, 8 rows for the cuff. Um, just because I think it's a little long, but, yeah, so, it's really cool. Um, I knit on size US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles, magic loop, high hat shirts. That is my sock needle deal. Um, and oh, I, this yarn is from, oh, I think I got one of the packaging, but Knit One Crochet 2, it's their hand-dyed cosette. It's their cosette base. So, yeah. I think it's like 75, 25 uh, base. Um, oh, I have something fun to talk about. So, in this bag, I have just started collecting all of my yarns. Um, like, sorry, all of my sock yarns. Why is this in here? This is the left of yarn from the Lesbo Cat. I told myself I, it's not going to go to socks. Um, but... I, at the end of the year, I really wanted to scrap a pair of socks with all of like the yarns that I've used for socks. Um, and these will be made for my mom, pretty much certainly. She is like essentially pre-ordered them, you know, without paying, because she's my mom. Um, but yeah, so, like I want to do that, because it would look really cool. So I've started to save in my yarn. So I have these from my March socks, April socks. Um, I don't know if I talked about this, but I did undo my, what was my February socks. Why are you falling? Um, I did undo my February socks because I said I was going to in the summer, and it's not summer, so what I want to do is, um, I'm going to the yarn store this week, and I want to get some yarn to do helical knitting with these so I can make shorty socks, um, and actually, like, do the full thing, you know. So, here's what I figured out. I weighed the one sock that I made, the one shorty sock, but for, pair of, for one shorty sock for me, it's 15 grams. Um, and that, like, blew my mind, because I knew, I heard people talk about, like, oh, 50 grams, like, it's totally enough for shorty socks, that's really all I knew. Um, but 15 grams, like literally only 15 grams for that much. Wow. So, I weighed these. These are each 20 gram balls. But, I want to have more than, like I want to have like a, a decent amount extra to make a pair of shorty socks. Potentially two pairs of shorty socks. So, I am, when I go to the store, I think I'm just going to look for like a 30 gram mini. Um, like look in their mini section, 30 gram mini, some kind of color that can maybe go with these. These are going to be my July socks. Um, I'm aware I'm missing them all. I'll get to that at the end of the podcast. But, um, I think I want to do like a Christmas in July type of deal. So, yeah. Um, this one is the one that's more green. This is the one that's more red. Um, the yarn, oh, what is it? Blanking. What was this yarn? It's a Texas dyer. Oh, we have no idea. Oh, Chaos Fiber Co. That's what it is. Chaos Fiber Co. And it's like the Christmas and the Lights colorway. Um, it's a variegated color. And it's actually a fade. I did not know this when I bought it, but so amazing. Um, I also said this was the first skein of hand dyed yarn I bought, so really sentimental. But. <laughs> So I made a pair of Christmas socks last year during um, Knitting Natty's uh, Sockmas, and I had extra. So like I made socks in January, but when I was knitting those socks, one they like I had them. I didn't have a yarn wind or anything, so I had them split it at the store into two skeins. And I noticed one skein was a lot more red, one skein was a lot more green, and I was like, huh, what is this gonna be? Like, is it gonna be striped? Is it gonna switch eventually? Like, what's happening? Um, and then, like, as I knit, 
like the toes ended up being like they kept getting closer and closer to the same color. Um, they never quite got it because I didn't finish up the um, the skin. I didn't do like exactly half, obviously, but they like got closer and closer. And then I finally I was like, okay, I need to know what's up with this yarn. So I looked on their Instagram, Chaos Fabrico, and I saw a post where they knit two socks, a green one and a red one, um, with this yarn. So I was like, oh, it's supposed to be this way. <laughs> so, yeah. But now I have, these are basically the center of the yarn. So like, this is the one that's a little bit closer to red, this one's the one that's a little bit closer to green, but in the middle of the balls, they'll like be the same color, you know, so really fun. So I think what I'm going to do is probably, um, I'm still going to do, this is the right, this is the left, but I want to do, as I said, here look, knitting. Um, so like one cuff, like I do toe up, so I'm probably going to do toe and one color, here look, knit the foot, um, the cuff and probably just like a separate cut off of yarn. Um, honestly maybe I'll do like, if this is the foot, this is the heel. Because I've heard that it's just way easier to do that if you're doing like short rows or something. That way you can just like join back in with your heel color like the leg. And then go for a different color. Because that'll just be fun. So. I'm excited. But yeah. So this is this bag. Um, I also went ahead and added the last little bit of yarn to my muscle work. Because why not? And, like it can go into socks. It's wool. So. Like, I know you technically probably shouldn't do socks 100% wool, but, like, I guess, I guess my rule is more, as long as it's not acrylic, it can go to socks. Like, fingering rate, right, not acrylic, sure. So, that is all. I finished objects. Um, and partial whip. So, let's go into my second whip. Here is my third muscle bird. So, I, that's what I'm using this little cup thing for. Um... And then this is the other yarn I'm using. So I'm doing another striped one, white and blue. And this one is so cool. It is amazing. Look at the bull's eye. This is also for a friend, by the way. So like I think honestly, I'm just gonna do the like my friends, the white striped. And then I'm trying to think if I have like another color. Cause like the green was like a one of a kind, like I don't have any more of that, any more of like that. I have a lot of this blue, um, I have a lot of other shades of blue. But I'm trying to think if I have like a third color to make one for myself. Cause then it could be like, we all have matching kind of hats. Um, but I don't. Not in like this kind of like, two-ply fingering. But like I want it to be like three different colors, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. And see. So I think that'd be really cute to like have matching hats, but who knows. Um, but yeah, so how I was talking about earlier, how I said I did something different here. I didn't even do make one right, make one left. I just did knit front back, and it worked amazing. Because um, also, here, let me grab this one. What I had noticed is when I cast on, like it looks like this little pumpkin effect. And I think it's just because A, like my tension, B, I don't quite know what I'm doing. But I figured it out. Because when I do, just the knit front back increases, it's like flat. So I think this is what I'm going to do from now on because it's super easy. Um, but yeah, I'm about five inches in. I need to do an inch for a day. I do like an inch every day and then it kind of gets finished within like 20 days. So... Yeah, that is this. Uh, same type of deal. I'm doing adult medium. Yes, I'm in my stitch. Uh, what is it called? Gauge is seven stitches per inch. So, yeah. Cast is on last Wednesday. Um, so, there's that. Um, I have a crochet. Finish up. Oh, uh, not finished object work in progress. So I have one panel complete. I'm making another summer top, by the way. I'm just not doing the diamonds. So here's the one panel. I cast on the second panel. Haven't quite gotten far enough to show it, but yeah. 
Um, I know I said I was going to start the ribbing, but then I realized when I stitched it together, it would like cut off the ribbing. So I think I'm just going to do the same thing as I did last time. Two panels, add on the sleeves, add on the ribbing, add on the neck ribbing, just to make it easy. Um, but yeah, this is the one I'm using. Basic acrylic. Um, it's like a light D. It's like a light worsted. Kind of like a DK. Pretty chill. Um, here's my last whip. You'd be amazed by my progress. Ta-da! The yarn just fell. So you know how last time we talked, I only had a yoke finished, and not even, it was like half a yoke finished. I have a whole body finished, and I have an inch of a sleeve, and it's really fun. All right. So like, I was working so hard to get this finished last, um, by um, Saturday, I ended up finishing it last night, but I got my ribbon. Um, and again, this is a gift, and I'm pretty sure the person who I'm making this for watches this podcast, so I'm not going to talk specifics, because I will give it away. So, here's the bottom. Um, and then there, it's all one by one ribbing, as the pattern stated. I'm doing this one pretty much exactly a pattern. Um, and then it says bind off. I didn't know what bind off to do, so I just did a knit bind off. Um, it flares out a little bit, but I think, like, with wear and after I block it, it'll be fine. And yeah, this is a flax pattern, by the way, by Tin Can Knits. Wonderful pattern. I do have to stop and say, um, since knitting this, like, I have, like, we've talked about this. I have all my gifts planned out for pretty much this entire year. And I, uh, what am I saying? Oh, and yeah, I have a couple different sweaters I wanted to, like, make for people, um, but I had, like, different sweater patterns picked out, like, I kind of was just, like, this, these look pretty. Yeah, I, I, I figured this out. Um, I, for the moment, only feel like knitting top-down sweaters, so I'm just gonna knit top-down sweaters. I'm not gonna knit in pieces, I'm not gonna knit panels and sew them together, because that, that's not gonna get finished. We all know the story of the Mushroom Sea Cardigan. It is, like, currently sitting in, like, a bag without needles in it. Like, it's gonna fall apart. I, I'm not gonna finish it. Like, let's just accept that. It's not being finished. But, this is finished. So, I'm just gonna knit all of them top down. And though I, because I couldn't find specific patterns for that, I'm just gonna do different modifications to the flex pattern, the flex light patterns. So yeah, um, that's how I was like, figured it out. Um, so I have about, I think five, including this one, planned to make, and like they all kind of have different like adjustments. So this one's just plain to pattern. I have two. Um, one is a flax pattern. I'm doing color blocked. So like the top is one color, bottom's color. Um, one the flax light also color blocked, and then one I want to add like a turtleneck to, because why not? So. We're gonna figure this out together. But I do have to say, if you wanna know any, it like, literally the main place I saw like a lot of these modifications, and I was like, oh, I wanna like figure this out. Or even just like, if you wanna color work, or like figure out, like you know you wanna do a sweater, you know you wanna do this pattern, but you don't know how you wanna like adjust it for this person. If you have Instagram, look, and just look flex sweater or flax light sweater. You don't even have to look at the hashtag, there's like a little specific thing, I don't know, I think it like tracks the pattern somehow. Um, but look there, or look like whatever pattern it is, if it's like the petite knits pattern, something like that, if it's like well known. Look on the hashtag or whatever, and just search. There are so many different things. Um, like literally, I came up with the color blocked one, if it's one person, in like it was kind of the middle of the night, like you know, you you aren't quite ready to go to sleep yet, so you look at Instagram. Um, and I was looking, and I'm like, what are the chances I can see something? So I saw something on my main feed, and I was, and it was like crazy color blocked. And I was like, okay, I don't want something like that, because I'd already kind of ruled out color work, because honestly, color work isn't my favorite. But I wanted something. Like I didn't want just this plain sweater. Um. So I, but I saw that, and I was like, oh. 
color blocking. Like I'm sure I can do something like that, like simple. So I looked on the hashtag and I saw this one baby sweater this person made and they did the top of the baby sweater, this like variegated creamy ice blue, the bottom like an actual icy blue variegated. And I thought that was amazing and I'm like, I'm doing that. So yeah, I just kind of did that. Um, and I do actually have the sweater, like a really cute plan, but I think I may do like the cast on and like the bottom color and well, I'm doing the top color and then like the cast, like the bind offs for the sleeves and the bottom um, and the first color. I don't know, I'm still thinking on that, but I think it'd be cute. Yeah, like just stuff like that, make it fun. Um, but yeah, I really just like stock and knitting. It was really nice. Um, plus I was able to whip this out so fast because it's worsted weight and why do y'all never tell me knitting worsted weight is so easy and so enjoyable? Like how? <laughs> like I can knit this without even looking. So fun. The ribbing was kind of killing me at the bottom, but I got through it. It's only nine rows from my gauge. Um, I got through it. So yeah, but, so this I'm doing like the exact same thing, I'm doing the garter panel and everything. I probably won't do the garter panel going on, going forward, um, just because again, easy knitting is fun, easy knitting is fun, but I think it adds nice detail to this one because it's all one color. Um, and yeah, I want to talk about the sleeves. So I am doing the sleeves kind of like how I saw Ruby and Rose's, ah, uh, I think her channel is just Ruby and Roses. Um, she's on YouTube. She has a podcast. She also is an amazing yarn dyer. Um, but she was knitting the petite knits sweater and her yarn. It was it's amazing. But the way she had her um, sleeves is she knits them like she doesn't connect it. She just knits back and forth, and then she stitches it back, and that way. A, she says it gives me much more structure, which I think is going to be great, especially um, for this sweater, this size, all of that. Um, but also, it gets real like the little hole down here, which, I mean, I've never knit a sweater with, like, an attached sleeve to know um, if that, like, happens. But from what I see here, it's definitely happening. And it's a good thing I'm knitting this way. Plus, it makes the garter panel that much easier because it literally means that even if I'm on, like, a purl row, I only got to knit that garter pattern. Like, I don't have to purl or garter pattern at all. And I know I'm still purling, but in my mind, it makes it easier because, like, I just think the garter pattern, like, I'm just knitting, I'm just knitting. I don't have to think, I don't know. It, it doesn't probably make sense. But, like, it tricks me into liking purling. Who knows? So, as I said, I'm about an inch in. But basically, yeah. So I just, I'm knitting back and forth here. It also helps me because I don't have 16 circulars in this your own needle size and I don't want to buy them so this way um, I don't have to be like pushing my needles around a bunch I can just be doing this with my long cord so stay right sorry stitch marker falling out but yeah so I don't like I literally don't know if you can see but probably even more noticeable next week but yeah I think it's cute um, I also did not do the short row shaping on this one since it's my first sweater. Um, I may do that going forward. We'll see. I honestly haven't even looked at that part of the pattern yet. But yeah. So this sweater is all done. So nice. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so. Where is the yarn? You escaped. Oh, ow. This hurts. Oh, pitching, pitching bone, pitching bone. Sorry, I complain a lot. Shove into bag. Ugh. Okay. My hair is ever. Sorry about that. But, okay, getting into that is all my urine stuff, so I guess we can talk about life. Um. Oh, exciting thing, um, which is when I you know, remember when I talked about my socks and I said I was skipping a month. This is why. 
um, someone messaged me on Instagram and they I basically just said like how much would it be for a pair of socks and I like we stopped talking and yeah so I'm just gonna so I think the wine is commissioned um so yeah I am gonna be making socks this person and yeah it's really fun I've never done something like this before um but I'm excited so I like sent them some yarn options they like got back to me and I'm going to the store this week to buy yarn and those are basically gonna be my June socks so I'm excited I just have to finish this May sock really quickly to cast these on it, it won't be a problem though it'll be fun plus the yarn they picked out so pretty for the options at my local yarn store I show them a couple of pictures of bamboo pop sock just because a it's a lot cheaper than hand dyed yarn um and it is really soft really easy to care for it's like washable all of that jazz if you notice any flickering my lamp behind the camera is um trying to send me morse code so the, the wonders of this podcast but yes so that'll be going fun and yeah i'm excited to do it i've never done anything like this before as i said but i think it's gonna go well so yeah so that is that of news oh yeah talking back to this um when i go to the yarn store that is when i want to also look at that and all the clearance and you know i'll be at a yarn store why not look um yes and oh other yarn news i also just bought some yarn for a sweater i'm making so the color block sweater that i was talking about um the flax one not flax light um i just ordered um yarn from joann's i basically i talked to my mom about like this person's size so i know like how much yarn i had to order i'm gonna basically be mixing a couple different sizes to make it work again i'm not gonna give specifics it's a gift that's kind of obvious but yes so i've ordered the yarn i've ordered um i needed five skeins total or sorry eight skeins total so i ordered three of the top one five of the bottom color that way because it's going to be like the yoke so it's like not going to use as much as straight knitting so i think that's going to work hopefully and yeah it's funny i had it in my cart for like five days because you know joanne it's like every day they have new different sales and such so i was just waiting because they didn't have that my local joanne so i had to i'm gonna have to get i had to get shipped um so i was just waiting for some sale on free shipping or like something where it's even if it's like something has a minimum i'm like i can buy more yarn in order to get shipping but that's fine so i had my car like each day i'm checking like is there a sale is there a sale there was finally a sale um at least my area, it was the. If you have the dog barking, the my dad just got home. Um, so many things going on, so many. But yeah, so finally there was like one ninety nine shipping, no minimum for three days, and I'm like, I I am ordering that. I I got you, I got you. <laughs> so yeah, I got the shipping. Um, it should be here by Thursday, so who knows? Maybe people show it to you next week. Um, I won't be casting it on because it's uses the same exact needles I have for my current sweater. So, like, I have to finish this one first. I was about to say I legally have to, but there was no laws around knitting. Am I making up laws? Is there a government system to knitting all of a sudden? Who knows? Maybe my brain has, like, an entire judicial court system for the way yarn works. It would make a lot of sense. So yes that oh yes uh second to last thing i wanted to talk about i will be taking a week off from podcasting uh, second week of june i don't know what day that is but i will let you all know leading up to it um i am going on a mission trip with my youth group at church so i will not be here to film edit or upload but i will get back to the week i will be here the week before and the week after do not worry so that will be good um though i don't actually i may not record the week after because i like if i'm there all week i won't really be able to knit anything that much 
like maybe like a little bit like sock at night but really this like I won't <laughs> so <laughs> it, I may be taking two weeks off then so I have something to actually talk about um we'll see again I'll keep y'all updated but yeah other life news I've been driving a lot more um if you do not know have not heard yet I am 16 a junior in high school so I am doing the normal person 16 thing and I have my motor's permit so I am driving and I'm driving places now I'm out I'm officially outside of like um parking lot in the neighborhood driving I'm driving places on roads with cars and stoplights it's really fun um like I don't know something like in my head like flicked a switch and now like driving is not scary it is fun like it's annoying at times don't get me wrong like you know you, like you, stopping transitioning from gas to brake it's like difficult frustrating when you mess up but it's fun either way it's fun so <laughs> yeah like I started driving um like when my mom takes me to Pilates I she lets me drive Sometimes I feel like I wake up early enough because it takes me, I'm not going at highways yet at all, like definitely not right now. So it takes me longer to get places, um, certain places, because I have to go like back roads um, instead of like when she drives, she obviously just like takes the highway and gets there really fast. So if I wake up early enough and she's taking me, I can drive. Um, she's picking me up, I can go. If I'm going with my sister, I, I'm not driving her car. She's taking me. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's fun. So exciting stuff. Um, as you can see, Papa Pathos is right here. He exists. Fun. Hello. Okay, I'm kind of talking nonsense, so I'm gonna just like stop it right here because I also have nothing to talk about. So. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, whatever this happened to be. Um, I, I really don't know what kind of just like brain farted information. Yeah. So <laughs> if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing down below. We still I don't have 52 subscribers. If you'd like to make that 53 or more, subscribe. And yeah, I mean, if you don't watch it, no pressure. Obviously, you do you. But I have to say it, kind of. Like, I think I have to say it. So, that... Oh! <laughs> I never mentioned this in the beginning of the episode, but if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I do have an Instagram account. It's homebuy.buy.cat. I post lots of stories, reels, um, the occasional photo that really has not been happening lately, unless it's, like, a thumbnail of this episode. So, yes. Um, I also will have all of these projects linked down below to my Ravelry pages, and yes. I am considering again, um, I have a few more people here doing a Ravelry group for this podcast. If you guys would like that, let me know. I don't, like, really want to do it if no one's going to join, but if I get, like, maybe, like, more, I'm going to put a number on it. I'd say more than, like, 10 people interested, I'll do it. I know it's like kind of asking for a lot given how many people are following me right now, but um, just comment down below or like you could always like DM me or something be like, hey, I'll be interested. Um, let me know because I'm thinking about doing it again. Like I mentioned it like I think like five episodes ago. Um, I didn't end up doing it yet. I'm thinking maybe depending how many people are interested, I may do it now. Yeah, basically, they just like ask me questions or whatever. Um, you can also ask me questions here. So, yes, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye because once again, I am rambling. So, goodbye. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and yeah, hope you have some time to spend with Yorin. Yeah, have a great day. Bye.